your scores with everybody? Or are you like shy, or scared, or embarrassed? For me, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, you're never gonna see each other ever again. <laughs> <laughs> some, some people are like really, really special when it comes to that. But Nidia, Carolina, do you mind? Because I, I want to show your scores. Or do you prefer for me to send it to you privately? I'm, I'm watching the video. Uh, the video yesterday, about yesterday. And I, 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 I had uh, 57 points. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> I need to practice more. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. I'm, I'm about to show you. So, look. We're going to begin with Oscar. Okay? We're going to begin with Oscar. Oscar, on the grammar, you got B2, or you got 46 questions correct on the grammar, right? On the listening, you got B1. B1. Hold on one moment. Um, listening, you got B1, and I think you got 40 points for that. Uh, for the reading, Oscar, you got B2. Okay, with a total point of 51. You did really good on the reading. Uh, on the writing, which is the writing that you sent me. Um, you got C1. You have 56 points. And in your speaking, you got B2. And it's a really high B2. It was 54. Okay, just a few, two more points and you would have gotten a C1. All right, so your overall is B2 with 247 points. Now, that is the overall, right? Yes. 247 points. All you need is five more points and you have C1. Really? Yeah. Five more points and you have C1. So literally just one more listening question correctly i think i think the first uh question that we discussed yesterday <laughs> that was the one <laughs> also in the um, the last audio uh i think the questions were too uh special or i don't know how to say because uh the, the options were like similar but uh, it changed only well for me it changed like only one aspect not in the grammar aspect i more about the like the meaning ideas so for for me it, the last audio was like a little bit uh difficult but i don't i yeah and i don't know if all my how many great answers uh, do they have? I wanna, I, I took this test. I took this test a long time ago and I got like three questions wrong. One, like, one of them was with the listening 
and then I think two were in the reading. Um, but let's 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 see. All right? How can I do this? How do I do this? What's this? You said on the last listening? Yeah. <laughs> In the passage, the word ladder. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. the Lord, ladder. You know what ladder is, right, or no? Uh, yeah, the second option. Yes, 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 yes. Always. It, for example, if I tell you, what do you prefer, chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? And if I say, I prefer the latter, it's like saying, I prefer the second option. It's a very formal way of saying the second option. Yeah, because at first I saw that letter C, but uh, with the second, uh, with the twice repeti repetition, I, like, I understand, understood, like, it wasn't letter C, but at first I, I understand, understood that it was, like, the best option, but I need to correct uh, with the second time. What about this one? University graduates lacking vocational experience will most likely find themselves to be underqualified in their selected highly competitive professional career. Yes. Well, for example, the question where I don't know if ah yeah that, that question uh, I don't know why is letter A well I, I chose letter C because uh, during the audio the the sir say, said that he was a, a man in business a man of business but the idea like it wasn't like the the audio set, so I was confused confused between letter A and letter C, and I chose letter C. Okay, let let's listen to this audio because it's been a long time since I heard it, and and we're going to focus on the last question. Okay. Good morning. I am honored to have been invited to speak to you today. A lot of you have just begun to experience university life. Many students get overwhelmed with the fast-paced world they have engaged in. It can be exhilarating to meet new people, experience a new sense of freedom, and explore unknown territory. Time can go by fast, and let me tell you that as you get older, you start to look back and wonder about a few things. When you reach that moment, you start wondering what could have been? How your future could have been different had you made different decisions? You look back on your actions, and most of all, on how you prepared yourself for your vocation. Although education is of paramount importance, experience is also necessary. As a businessman in the community, I want to share with you this morning the importance of having some vocational experience before you graduate. I have encountered many students who graduated from high school without obtaining any experience from a part-time job. They reach college and continue to believe that as long as they graduate, they will find a job. Sadly, businesses don't think this way. Not only must you study hard while in college, but you must also keep looking for ways to put that gained theoretical knowledge into practice. If given the option of hiring a person with a high educational background or someone equally educated and experienced, a business will select the latter. This is the reality that many young adults are not aware of. Only when you understand the importance of gaining vocational experience 
will you discover that you made the correct choice when looking for a job. I want to use my time today to tell you all to take advantage of where you are. The time to start gaining vocational experience is now. I choose A. I choose A. Chose. Chose. <laughs> chose. Chose A. Yes, that's good. If you chose A, that's good. And Oscar, let me tell you why it's not C. It says because he encourages students to take advantage of the opportunity that the university offers. He never talks about that. Yeah. You know, he talks about, you know, what the employers are looking for, what companies are looking for. So, yeah, that one was, sorry, sorry about that. And, um, well, I also heard the answer to this one. You know, university graduates lacking vocational experience. You know, vocational experience is actually working, you know, like if you're studying to be, well, if you're majoring in English, then you need to go and work while you are, while you are majoring. Like maybe you can be a substitute teacher, a teacher assistant, um, a tutor or something like that, but you need to have some type of experience because when you graduate, you know, these companies, they don't care about your degree, man. Yeah. They don't care about your degree. They care about your experience, what you can do for them. Because if you have experience, that means that they don't need to train you. They save time and they save money. And um, so university graduates, vocation, look at lacking vocation experience will most likely find themselves, see, to be underqualified in their selected highly competitive profession. Um, now, Look, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell everybody something right here, right now. Um, my students, I, I, ha I have taught this, this same San Diego University course four times. Four times since, I don't know, since March. And my students have told me that on, I've never taken the second sample test, okay? But my students have told me that on the second sample tests, it's very important to pay a lot of attention to the questions because like 20% of those questions will be on the real test. It will be on the real test. So now, in fact, one of my students said, teacher, one listening was exactly the same for the second sample test. And one article was exactly the same. And the speaking questions, two or three were the same, teacher, from the sample test. I was like, really? So now, you know me, you know, I, I am a teacher and I say, don't cheat. But cheat, man, cheat. Do whatever you got to do. Do whatever you got to do to get your degree, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, when you never take the second sample test, I don't know, screenshot or take pictures of the test. So when you finish, you can study it. You can study it. And, you know, Try to memorize it, but don't stress about memorizing it. It's not a good idea. And um, you, you will do a good job, okay? So for example, Oscar, all you needed was five points, man. Yeah. But let's say, for example, that you pay attention to the second sample test and it's the same questions. Your, your listening is gonna go up easily. Reading is gonna go up. So I, I think that if you pay a lot of attention to the second sample test, you will get C1, man, easily. All you need is five points. One yeah. question, literally, one question. We can do for, this. For example, in the second sample test, we will have uh, like a 
examinator or we're only do by ourselves yeah you will do it by yourself uh let me explain how the second sample test will go so i'm gonna send you stephanie carmona's number okay on the on the whatsapp group or have i sent it already no no all right well i'm gonna send you her name i'm gonna do it right now it's english accent Okay, so I sent you her number. She, well, not her number, the school's number. And she is our certification manager. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, hey, if you, good afternoon, Stephanie Carmona. I am Oscar Ruiz, um, and, I, and I took the SENI preparation course with, with Fernando, and I would like to know when I can take the second sample test. Okay. Or I would like to know when I can schedule the second sample test. And um, like I told you guys the other time, it can be any time from Monday to Saturday, from I think 10 in the morning to five in the afternoon. So it's a very flexible, and um, yeah, that's all. She will ask you for your email, and you will and you will receive an email with your with your asset access code, and then she will send you a link like the day of your test, and then you will insert your information and you will take the test. Now, on the second sample test, you're not going to receive any feedback okay because i don't see it the director doesn't see it stephanie carmona doesn't see it it's literally directly to san diego university in california so you know we never see it but it's just for you to get familiarized with the format of the test which is one of the most important things when you're going to take a test like that to get familiarized as much as possible. So the, the, te the test uh, will be with time and like the real format? Yes, it will be exactly like the real thing. Okay. Um, uh, you will have a little timer, like somewhere, it, it's going to be on your, your entire screen. Uh -huh. Your entire screen, and it's going to say San Diego University test. And in every question is going to have a timer. It's going to be like this a line, and you're going to see your time going up. Like a, like a bomb. Okay. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so yes, after today, get in contact with Stephanie Carmona and ask her. Send send her a message tonight. Okay. You know, think about when you want to take it, and take it next week. Or, yeah, next week. Take pictures of it, and then whenever you finish, if you are satisfied. Um, take the real test if not send me a message so I can so we can see if we need to take this course again and it would be free if you take it again all right okay huh. they got the carry up yeah oh my sounds God. like sunny <laughs> Daryl. yes all right Carolina you are next Carolina Okay, teacher. You got B1 on the grammar with 40 points. You got A2 in the listening. 
that 25 low. Month. Yeah, th that was low, yes. D1 in the reading. A panel. What'd you say? D2 in the writing. With the B2, I'm going to give you 50 points. Speaking, my friend Carolina, you got. Really, you don't have anything. I never received anything from you for the speaking, Carolina. But I'm going to use it based off of your speaking in the classroom. And I'm going to give you B1. It's going to be 42. All right. And overall, overall, you got B2 with 100 and. 93 points all right now that's not bad that's not bad at all see if you see if you see this right here 193 it's a little bit in the low b2s but you you are like pretty pretty secure. If if B two is your goal, then you will definitely get B two on the real test. Now, what I definitely recommend is to you know work on the listening a little bit more. Um, now, the the best thing to do with the listening is to you know. To clear your mind, clear your mind and just focus on everything that they are saying. You know, don't, the first time you listen, don't try to understand everything. Just try to consume the words. You know, a, a, a lot of times we, we, we listen to things, but we don't pay attention to them. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that all of you have family members that listen to music in English. You know, everybody does, right? Yes. But they listen, they listen to it, but they don't pay attention to it. <laughs> they, 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 they hear noises and they like it. It's cool, you know? <laughs> yes. But... They don't, understand, they don't understand it, and that's because they don't pay attention to it. They never take time to, you know, what is this word? What is this word? What is this word? What you do, and you have the ability to do that. You have the level. So I'm going to give you some, some more tips at the end after I give everybody their grade. I'm going to continue with Roman. All right, grammar. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I never do very well, the simple test. I never do. You are good, Roma. Well, maybe this time is different. <laughs> oh yeah, it's better. It's definitely better, my friend. Definitely. Oh, I want, to, I want to hear good news, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel yeah. very sad in another group. You know? I want I want to cry. I I yeah. think I'm I'm a bad student. You're a bad student? Nah. Bad, yes. I'm sad. No, oh, don't be sad. You're not you're not yeah. a bad student. I'm yeah, disappointed. No, but... disappointed. Yes? yes. Don't don't worry, don't worry. It's good. You have B2. You and have then, B2. And then my writing teacher more disappointed. Why? In my writing. You, you didn't even send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I, I, yes. I didn't see it. Yes, but. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Teacher, but I don't want to know about the listening. I'm A2 is so poor. In my best effort, I feel strong in that. 
Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. A listening and I might a too. Oh, I saw this side. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't worry about it, man. Look, it, we have, we have weaknesses, man. Weaknesses? We have weaknesses where we're not going to be great at everything. Uh huh. It's, it's just, you know, life, we can't be perfect. Now, you can work on it, obviously. If you work hard, you can definitely improve your listening. Yes. But you got to change some habits. Okay. And, um, but I'm, I'm going to tell you about me. Okay. In grammar, I am C2. In grammar, mm. I am C2. In um, writing, I am C2. And speaking, C2. But and, and listening C two, but in the in the reading, I I am C one. Now obviously C one is is good. I don't I don't complain. But it, to me it's it's frustrating to be C one in the reading because um, you know w when I was in school, I was always one of the students that had the highest scores in the reading, and I am I am not com working with other Mexicans, I'm working with Americans because I went to school with Americans. And to come to Mexico and they say I have C1 in reading, I'm like, what? But that was my best thing in the United States. So it, it was really, really weird to me. I'm like, okay. But I don't know. Um, I, I have been reading a lot more now. So maybe if I took uh, the test again, the IELTS or the CPE, Mm -hmm. Maybe I will get C2 on everything, but uh, I'm not worried. <laughs> Living abroad, abroad it helps a lot to improve your English, right? Yeah, yeah. If you make an effort to communicate with people, yeah. Definitely, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Like, um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna give you like some good examples. My mom and her mom, my grandma, my mom, and my grandma, they moved to the United States in 1998. Okay, 1998. My grandma returned to Mexico in 2012. So she lived over there for 14 years, no? Yes. She didn't learn anything. <laughs> oh. My grandma did not learn anything. She, she, got, she got a job at a factory with Mexicans. So they were speaking Spanish. <laughs> and, and then she opened up her business, a Mexican restaurant. So the only, all the customers are Mexican. <laughs> They're speaking Spanish. But my mom, my mom... No, she, she, she's, she's good. She said, no, I got to go to school. And she took English classes. And then she went, to, she went to a technical college. So she got two years of college in English. And then she works with a lot of Americans because she is a nail technician. So, you know, they come to her house and she does the nails and things like that. So she actually learned a lot. But my grandma didn't learn anything if i say abuela how are you okay she she will not she will not do that so <laughs> it, it, but if you go over there man look if you go minimum three months three months okay. go go to go to a workshop like i don't know if you like football go to a football seminar Mm -hmm. um, go to the park and play football with other Americans mm -hmm, yes. and uh, I don't know go to the mall and talk to the workers at the mall in English yeah because while, uh, when I was uh, studying I never took any kind of uh, scholarship to study abroad because I was focused on on playing football and sometimes I I'm thinking that it could be 
helpful uh, more a little bit if I were uh, taking those kind of scholarship at least at least one. But well, that's uh, already happened. But yeah, I I want to 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 go to study to go to abroad. Yes, man. Look, oh, really minimum three to six months, man. Mm. But I'm talking every day going out. Don't go and stay in your house. You know, go out and socialize. It will work. It, it has happened with many people. Many people, they go over there, they live for one year, and they return and they become English teachers. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this guy is really good. I didn't, I didn't tell you that kind of story of me when I visit Boston. I live in there one month. I was to be in Boston because all the people speak in English and you never find uh, uh, Mexican, Mexican people or something like that. And I need to effort to eat, to live, to travel. <laughs> I you live went? In, yes, I went in, in Boston one month. When? Uh, maybe in 2010. 2010? Yes. Wow. And, and do you think it helped you? Yes, because you need to effort to eat, to to find the address. Survive. Yes. <laughs> I remember the, the name of the street is uh, Bacon, and I said Beacon. <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> Everybody laugh about me, but I, I learned how to pronounce. Bacon. <laughs> yes, bacon. Uh, bacon is good, man. Yes. But that's right. just my story. Every... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yes. Yes, you know, I, I know that, Roman, you are fluent. You you speak at a good pace. I mean, you, make, you make a few mistakes, but you speak yes. like you don't have problems speaking. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's good. <laughs> that's the... That's the reason about that. <laughs> yes. Nice. And look, man, overall, Roman, you got B2. Yes. All right. But only by one point, man. 188. The minimum is 187. Okay. <laughs> yes. So by one point. But yeah, that's okay. Okay. Because if you, if you pay attention to the second sample test, mm -hmm. it will help you a lot. Okay. Yeah, you will have a medium B2 and you don't have to worry about it. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, Nidia, here we go with you. Nidia got a B1. <clears throat> Listening for Nidia is A2. And during the the test, the real test, uh, the examiners uh, control like the time of, or uh, for example, the listening, the times that is going to be repeated, or you have only like two opportunities, and you can use it uh, whenever you want, whenever you want. Well, um, this is this is what happens. I, I believe, you know, they give you, I think like 20 minutes for the listening. <clears throat> so some listenings, you can listen to them two times. Some of them three times. That's what some students have told me. Okay. You, but you have to pay attention to the time. But uh, my student said, no teacher, you don't feel any pressure. It's really slow. Time goes by really slow. And I'm like, really? Like, yes, it's a, it's a good exam. Like, oh, okay, that's nice. Because on the TOEFL, it's not nice. Yeah, because, you yeah, know, also in FC, when I did FC, the, the audio was, play, was played uh, in the, uh, in, all, during all the exam. It was like the audio last the whole exam. Uh, 
uh, they didn't stop the the audio. Uh, I mean, also the audio said you have like a minute to answer, and you have the answer, and then the audio start again. And, and oh my was, gosh, the, the, yeah. that's, that's difficult, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, Nidia, overall, you got B1, 186. Nidia, by one point, by one point, 187, you needed 187 to get B2, just one point. Just one more question in the grammar. That's all you needed. One more question. Right? Now, if you got anything else correct, like in the listening, well, that's five points. In the, in the reading, that's three points. All right? So all you need is one more point, and I think you can achieve it, Nidia. You can achieve it. Now, an, another area of opportunity for you, Nidia, is your speaking. You know, and I'm going to give you tips on how to do all of this, right? How, how to improve every, every skill. All right. So, Nidia, all you need is one more point for B2. You're not far. You're, you didn't do bad. It's good. Now, let me give you guys some tips. All right. If, if you have your... Your notebook please take some notes all right the, the first thing I I want to give you or tell you is you know what what I'm about to explain today is August 27 27 2020 and I'm going to give you one study tips, two, skill tips. All right. Now, I, I have been teaching for three years, but I don't limit myself to teaching English only. I, I, I want to teach, you know, everything about life that can help my students. So I think one of the most interesting things that I have learned this year is this thing called be fast. Okay, be fast. And you can use be fast if you want to learn faster. All right. If you want to learn faster, do this. All right. So let's say that you have to study for an important exam. In this case, the San Diego University exam. Right. And you take the second sample test and you took pictures of it. And you want to memorize it, right? But how can you memorize 92 questions in one week? Well, one of the things you can do is be fast. The first thing you need to do is um, believe, all right? <laughs> now, w w believe means that you have to think you can do it think you can do it there is this amazing quote from Henry Ford and he said whether you believe you can do a thing or not you are correct whether you believe you can do a thing or not you are correct so basically if you say you can do it you can 
If you say you can't do it, you can't. You're correct. It, you know, it's all about your mentality. Now, this is, an, this is probably one of the most important ones because I have had students that say, ah, teacher, I hate grammar. I hate the listening. I hate reading. And um, well, it hates you too. You know, it's, it's, it's karma. It's your karma. You know, if, if you have a good mentality, life will treat you good. If you have a bad mentality, life will treat you bad. It's that simple. It's not about religion. It's not about nothing. It's life. So, you know, first you need to believe, I will pass this test. I will pass this test. I will do great on this test. And how can you believe? Well, give your reasons, give yourself reasons as to why you deserve it. I will do great on this test because I study a lot. I will do great on this test because I am great when it comes to grammar. I, I am going to do great on this test because I deserve it, because I have been studying hard, because I paid for this course, because I took notes, because I did the homework. So you have to believe. That's the first thing you need to do, believe. The next thing you need to do is exercise. And when I, when I say exercise, I mean physical exercise, running push-ups, burpees, um, squats. You have to exercise. You really, really do. If you want to learn faster, memorize things, and you don't exercise, it's really difficult, right? It's not impossible, but it's difficult. If you exercise, um, it's very important, and it will help you a lot. And why? Well, the primary function of your brain is to move your body. That is the number one function, right? To move your body. And if you exercise, you are moving your body and you are stimulating your brain. You are stimulating your brain. And at the same time, you are relaxing your body. And when your body is relaxed, you learn better. So if you don't exercise, you know, right now is a good time to implement it. You know, even if it's just 10 minutes, 15 minutes every night for two weeks, for three weeks until you take the test, I promise you, you will notice a big difference. A big, big difference. Um, I'm gonna give you an extra tip about exercise. Um, when, I am, when I am about to study, <clears throat> First, I exercise, you know, for 30 minutes. Uh, I exercise and then I take a shower and then I begin to study. And what I notice is that I am in really good mood. It's like, oh my gosh, I love this. I love this topic. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I can't believe this, this is amazing. It's, it's just normal information. It's boring information, but because I exercise, I am relaxed and my brain is, you know, very excited. I learned so much. I learned so much. Um, do you have any doubts or any questions right now? No, no, that's... All right, the, the next thing you need to do is forget. forget. You know, a, a lot of times um, we, we have a difficult time learning because we think that we know something already, you know? For example, if I say, okay guys, today we're going to learn the simple present. You're gonna say, the simple present? Man, I know that already, I know that. But maybe I will teach you something you don't know about the simple present. But because you have that idea that you know it already, you will block your brain. See, I, I want you to, Think of your brain as a cup, or in this case, a bottle. You know, if it's full, if it's full, you can't put more information in it. You know, you have to empty the glass. You have to forget everything temporarily, you no? Know, while you're going to study or while you're going to take the class, forget everything. 
fill it with new information and then get the other information and put it back in. All right. So whenever you're about to study, you know, just clear your mind, clear your mind. If you think, you know, it's, you know, you need to have the mentality of a beginner. I am a beginner. I am a new student. I am fresh. I don't know anything. Please teach me. That should be your mentality every single time. The next thing you need to do is you need to be active. Be active. When, when you take pictures of the second San Diego the University test, don't just read it. You know, if you don't understand something, find it on the internet. Uh, when do I use the preposition on or at? When do I use the verb ing instead of to verb? Find it, be active, ask questions, um, participate, you know? You need to be active. Don't, don't just consume the information, create the information in your brain, all right? You need to co-create that information. And that's that's the part that is how we learn we don't learn by consuming information we learn by creating information that's the best way the next thing you need to do is to be in the state okay this one is a little crazy this one is crazy and I'm, i don't know if you will ever have heard something like this the strongest, the strongest scent that we have in our body is our smell. The smell. I don't know if it has happened to you that you smell something and it, and it reminds you, bless you, it reminds you of something that Thank you. Ha happened Pleasure. many Pleasure. years ago. Thank you. Many, many years ago. For example, the other day I was walking in my street, on my street, and I smelled some some food, and it reminded me of the food in McDonald's in the United States. Food that I haven't eaten in four years, four years. It reminded me of that food. I, I will never forget that. It's it reminds me of biscuits and gravy. That's the name of the plate, biscuits and gravy. So when I smell it, it's like, wow, it takes me back to memory. And I don't know if that has ever happened to you. You're, you're walking maybe in the mall and you smell some perfume and it reminds you of your friend or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. And like, wow, uh -huh. they, they wore that perfume. You remember that. You remember <laughs> that smell. I promise you, it sounds crazy. You remember it. So one thing you can do is that when you are studying spray s s some perfume or some cologne so you can remember that smell and whenever you're going to take the test spray the perfume again s s s s s. why because your brain remembers when it is remembers things when it is connected to one of our senses so smelling, if, if you can remember, smelling is the strongest one. So if you study and you smell like potatoes and then you take the test and you smell like potatoes, chances are that you are very likely to remember everything that you study. Okay. And, or maybe it doesn't need to be perfume. Maybe it can be a candle. You can light a candle, vanilla or cinnamon candle. Or you can put oh. air freshener. But I promise you that trick is crazy, but it works. I when I when I when I read this information, I was like, this is stupid. But I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and I did it. And I I am not the type of person to to I'm not I'm not a study. I I, I don't study. 
I just do my homework and that's it. I'm finished. Mm -hmm. But when I do my homework, I, I, I do this. I, I put on my cologne right here and I smell it. And then I study <laughs> and then I study. And, and, and when I took my test, my TKT test, I did that. And it's like all of the, all of the memory from that I studied came back and I was like, whoa, this, this really works. It really, really works. And, and my TKTs, I got banned for, banned for, banned for, banned for. And other teachers that, that took the TKT that we have the same level of English and, and, but they studied more. They were like, oh, Fernando, I studied two hours every day. And I was like, really? And you only got band three? <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> but it's because, you know, all of these things that I, I learned, I applied them and it works. So, man, look, I promise you every, everything. I, I promise you, do this and you will have crazy results and you will, you will remember me for your rest of your life with this. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, and, teacher. And, and the next thing is you need to teach. If you learn something, teach it. Um, why? You know, it's one thing to consume the information, but it's another thing to give the information. You know, and you know what they say, you learn two times faster when you teach. I don't know if this has happened to you. Um, you the, the, your school gives you a new topic to teach your students and you've never seen the topic. So you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta actually prepare. Oh my God, I gotta prepare. <laughs> and um, so you prepare your class. But after that, you look at the lesson again, oh, this is easy. I know this, I know how to teach this. Or maybe it takes you two times. After the second time, ah, oh, this is easy. This lesson again, okay, I got this. And it, it happened to me when I was teaching the past perfect. The first time I saw the past perfect, it's like, I know this, but I don't know why. I don't know why you do this. And I taught it one time and I, I remembered it for the rest of my life because I prepared like six activities for the past perfect. And I was like, you know, it's easy. And the good thing is that we are teachers and we have the, the opportunity to teach our students anything. Yeah. Like this thing that I am teaching you, I have taught it to other students and they have become and, and the ones who use it, they, they, they make a big difference. You notice it. And because I teach this, I will never forget this. I remember the first time I was trying to explain this to one of my students. And I was like, oh my gosh, what significa la ya se me olvidó. But then, it's true. But then it's after true. The yes. Uh, but then after the, 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 the second time, I was like, ah, this is easy, 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 easy. So look, this is one of my things, and, 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 and this is not something that I invented. This is called Be Fast. It is a strategy from this man called Jim Quick. He is a... He can read many books. Yeah, he is. Yeah, as you know him, psychologist. Yes, I know that. And, I and know he's a brain coach. Yeah, he's a brain coach. He's a brain coach, Jim Quick. He is, he is famous because he has helped many rich people and companies develop high, high learning skills, fast learning skills. An actor, an actor to the read the script or the learn care scripts or something? Yes, yes. So if you want to learn more about these kind of things, Jim Quick, you can follow him on Instagram, on Facebook, and he's always giving free tips or you can read his book. So he is a um, you know, really respected guy. He taught people in Harvard, 
Um, he has worked with Apple, Nike, you know, he has given classes to Elon Musk, the creator of Tesla and SpaceX. So, you know, this guy is like really legit. Genius. Yes. And, and he, I don't know how to say tartamudo. Because he's he he suffering in his childhood about that. Oh, yes, yes. He used to, he was a stutterer. A uh, stutterer. It's a hardware stutterer. Yeah, and now he's not. He is a great speaker. He speaks in yeah. front of many people. <laughs> um, so, yes, and, and one of the other things he says is take a cold shower. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Like, before a test, take a cold shower. Um, in sports, we do that because, you know, it reduces inflammation. Yeah. And our brain, it's always inflamed. When you have a headache, it's mm -hmm. because it's inflamed. It's inflamed. And if you take a cold shower, it will help your headache. Yeah. All right. So before you test, if it's possible, exercise, take a shower, and then put some perfume, uh, and <laughs> it, you you have a good. You'll be good. My do Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> oh, oh, my <laughs> oh my gosh! Mademoiselle, please. Oh my gosh! <laughs> my uh, I have the Spinoza pass, and you have Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yes, use it Dolce and Gabbana. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, so that is just like some general study tips. Okay, Jim Quick, amazing guy. I love him. Okay. He has made me a great Let learner. Let me take a picture, please. Don't erase yet. yet. Okay. For me, it's difficult to... Sorry, sorry. Okay, promo. No, 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 Oscar, please. Okay. For me, it's difficult uh, to do exercise because I, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm used to play football and all the routine, like two, three hours uh, doing the exercise and then playing football and again, the gym and those kind of activities. And when I'm doing exercises, like... Uh, I start like uh, after a half hour. Uh, after a half, I said, "Ah, oh, I'm I'm bored because I I don't feel like the same feeling, <laughs> the same excitement." Yeah, I understand that, man. But look, twenty thirty minutes is okay. It it's not about how long you exercise; it's how you exercise. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like me, I only exercise maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And to me, when, when I am finished, I am sweating like a, like a dog. Yeah. And, and they say, because I did burpees, <laughs> burpees. I, I do oh, like yeah. 50, 60 burpees. And you know, you know burpees, man, you play football. Oh, uh, it's, it's a punishment. <laughs> for, us, for us, it's a punishment. Burpees. Yeah. Yes, the burpees, man. Ten burpees, and you will be like, <sighs> yeah, it's yeah. really hard. But the, to me, I like it because I can just do it fast, and I can say, "Had there, cuerpo te lo mereciste." Ten, ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I I really miss to hit my head against another against another head. <laughs> yes. It's exercises, right? Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, you can apply this strategy to the grammar, but what about the listening? Now we're gonna get up. Now we're gonna start with the listening. All right. The first thing you need to do is listen to as much music in English from today until the test okay and if possible with the lyrics 
it, I'm talking about if you can do this for five hours every day, do it. Five hours every day. Um, just listen to music. Just listen to music. Um, you, you know, m many times people go into a test cold, cold. You know, they're talking to oh oh, oh they're talking to their wife, wife and oh see sí, amor, bueno. Ya, ya voy a entrar a ese examen, hablamos hace rato. Boom. Entran con la mente en español. Mm, yeah, no, yeah. Para un examen en inglés. Yeah, hey, no, yeah. That's really, really bad. Yes. It's really, really bad. So maybe before the test, you know, just dedicate two hours while, while you exercise or meditate. Listen to music in English. Don't, and don't talk in Spanish. Don't talk in Spanish. You know? You know, tell 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 your family members, hey, you know, I I need this, I need this for me, and they're gonna say things. Ah, está loco. Ah, es como crees. Está ahí, está. Yes, don't, it works. Don't talk it to works. me today, please. Don't talk to me. Yes, you have to warm up your yeah, body. Yeah. You know what I mean? Warm it up. And really, that's the only thing you can do for right now. Um. You know the format. You you can see the questions and listen to the conversation at the same time, so it's not difficult. You know, it's not like the TOEFL. The TOEFL, you listen to the conversation, and you don't even know the questions. And then the conversation finish, and they ask you the questions. So you can't check, you know. But on this one, you can. You can listen and read the question at the same time. All right, and the say and the second thing. Don't just listen. Pay attention to it. You know, clear your mind of other things. This this one I I was um I did this yesterday. I did this yesterday. My, my cousin, his name is Alex. He is 15 years old. And he sent me a video of two rappers. They, they are battle rappers. I don't know what you call them in Spanish. Batalla de gallos. Batalla de gallos or freestyle. Ajá, algo, algo así, como, como que hacen competencia. Ajá, ajá, estilo de barrio. Ajá, and, y, y todo el tiempo lo estoy escuchando. Y digo, no, manches, ¿a poco se dedican a esto? Ya, ya, ya. Y estaba tratando de escuchar, pero estaba pensando en, en eso, como, ¿cómo pueden hacer esto así? Así viven la vida. Eh, I, I was trying to listen to the song. But because I was thinking of other things, I, I didn't understand the word. And I was like, no way, no way. I, I, and then I looked at them. I looked at them and I stopped thinking about it. And then I, I started to understand. Oh, okay, they're saying this and this and this and this. So, you know, a lot of times we listen to something, but we're thinking about other things. Yeah. So we can't really understand what they are saying. So, you know, we have to clear our mind and just focus on that. Focus on that. Focus on your listening. And another thing, if there's a word you don't understand, don't panic. Because if you do, you won't focus on the other words that you do know. And this happens a lot. Uh, many students, they say, ah, oh, teachers can only tiene esta palabra. Y lo demás. You know, and, and, and the rest, like, it's just one word. Yeah. One word that you didn't understand destroys everything. So, you know, that, that's one important thing. If there's a word you don't understand, don't panic. 
because if you do, you won't focus on the other words that you do know. All right, and that is all I can tell you for the listening right now. And if possible, um, do as many listening tests on British uh, Council. That's my best, the strong, and I feel bad. Okay, so British Council is a free website and you can choose the listening skills. They, you go to BritishCouncil.com. Uh -huh. I, I think I can show you. Okay. Let's see. Okay. British Council. All right, yes, it should say learn English at BritishCouncil.org. You're going to press on it. And then it's going to, you're going to see this. It's a green thing. You're going to go to Habilidades and comprensión oral. I'm listening. And here it's going to give you different principiantes A2, intermedio A2, intermedio B1. All right. And um, lo que yo quiero que ustedes hagan, what I want you to do is, you know, I gave you your, your scores for the listening. For example, uh, Oscar, you got B1 in the listening, right? So you need to, you need to do activities in B2, all right? You need to do activities in B2. All right, so you're going to press on B2, and then you have many, many tests you can do. They're not really tests, they're activities. So for example, you can go to a business interview. You press it. And here it has the listening. It has a transcription so you can actually listen and read at the same time. I actually recommend that the first time you do it with no transcription and then the second time you do it with the transcription just to double check. And then you're gonna have some work right here, another one, and if you want to, you can download the worksheet. Okay. okay. So that's what you gotta do for that. Okay. That British Council is a good one. And that is for the listening, guys. Do you have any questions? No. No. This is our last class. No. Yes. Yes, this is our really? last class. No, I feel <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> now, the next thing we have to work on is the reading. Number one, read. Read as many articles as possible about traveling, about business. What else is very common? Hobbies. Oh, no, one moment. Let me think about the topics that are on this. Vacations, history, and technology. Okay, you know, re read as many articles. Don't read books. You know, don't, don't read books because if you read a book, maybe it's going to be too much from here to the test. 
but an article, you know, it's usually two, three, four paragraphs, so you can finish it in 10 minutes. And um, my second thing is use an English to English dictionary. Do not translate. Do not translate. If you translate, you are not helping yourself. Um, now, translation sometimes is necessary. Like, but, but for if example, I don't, if I, I don't understand some word, can I use trans translator? translator? What do you mean if you don't understand a word? Yes, if a paragraph, if I, I don't understand a word in a paragraph, I cannot use the, the, the translator. Use a dictionary. English to English? Yeah, English to English dictionary. Um, <clears throat> this is a good thing because when you find the definition of the word, maybe there is a word in the definition that you don't understand. So now you have to find the definition of that word so it, it's like a connection, you know? One word will help you learn another word. And that's why it's important to use an English to English dictionary. When you, when you stop reading something and find a translation, sacas tu mente del inglés y lo pones en español. Y esa interrupción es muy mala. You, you, you block your learning. Right? Estás, le está dando bien, 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 y paras el español, y otra vez tienes que recuperar. Mm -hmm. Y le está dando bien, traduces otra vez, y te paras. So it's really, really bad if you do that. You know, you have to English to English, so you can keep your mind in English. All right? Keep your mind in English. Oh, it, hurt, it hurts my head to talk in Spanish and English at the same time. All right? <laughs> But that's, that's what you have to do. Right. Um, and another thing, if you don't understand a word in the reading, again, don't panic. Don't panic. Use context clues. Yeah. Use context clues. That's one of the most important things. And uh, number four. Read the questions first, then find the answers. Okay. You know, this is like the sc skimming reading. I know that uh, scanning. number four is skimming and scanning. Yes, exactly. Um, skimming, skimming would be, you know, w when you read everything fast, so you can find the general idea. That is skimming. And scanning is when you find specific information, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how many people died in the airplane? You find the number. Yes. Um, and skimming would be like, wh what, is the, what is the main idea of the first paragraph? And you read the first paragraph like quickly, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like that. So. What I don't want you to do is read the paragraph and then read the questions and then you got to read the paragraph again because you don't know that, you know, you forgot the information, you know. So read the questions first, then find the answers. Answer the easy questions first. I know this probably goes against some of your ideas to answer easy questions first but let me tell you why this is important if you answer the easy questions first then the only thing you need to focus on is the hard questions but if you answer the hard questions first you are frustrated because of the hard questions and then you also need to do the easy questions but because you are frustrated you will not be efficient Okay, so answer the easy ones first. So if you get frustrated with the difficult ones, 
it's okay because you already did the other questions. All right. Usually the easy questions are the ones that say, what does this word mean in this paragraph? All right. What does line 12 say about Robert? You know, those things that you can find in a specific places, those are the easy ones. All right. The most difficult ones are um, about feelings or opinions. All right. What do you think the author feels uh, when he wrote this article? That's a hard one because feelings, you can't read feelings, so you have to use context and that, that's a little more difficult. Yeah. All right. Do you have any questions? No. 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 Okay. And now let me give you tips about the speaking. The speaking. One. Speak in English to yourself every night. Find questions on the internet and answer those questions in front of a mirror. Record yourself and then listen to yourself and check the mistakes. This is the best thing you can do by yourself to improve your speaking. All right? All right. This is the best thing you can do by yourself. Now, when, when we are speaking, we have different types of speaking. You have one person speaking. You have one person speaking to another person, a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You have one person speaking to two people, a trio. You have, you have four people speaking to each other, a small group. And well, the ones that require two people, well, the best thing you can do is talk to two people. The three people, the best thing you can do is talk to two other people. And the group, the best thing you can do is talk to a group. But for this test, you're only speaking to the computer. You know, you're just speaking. Nobody's, nobody's interacting with you. So this is, this is a good exercise for you. Speak in English to yourself every night. Find questions on the internet and answer those questions in front of a mirror. Record yourself. It's a very important to record yourself because sometimes when you are speaking, you are very focused on speaking that you don't notice your mistakes. And then once you listen to yourself, you say, ah, oh, why did I say this? I know this, you know? And you can check your mistakes and, you know, write down your mistake and try it again. And this time, make sure you don't say the same mistake, okay? That's now, what I told you. Uh, yes, today or two days ago that I spent like the whole night only uh, recording the first answer, or the first, the second, or the ones who talk about the Diana's parents that are mad at her. I spent a lot of time like trying to create a story or and it was like I went to tell this and I, yeah, I did that. I listened and now that's not fit in that part. But, and it was really difficult. I never, I never do that. And it was difficult, more difficult. For me, it was more difficult than doing, uh, talking to another person. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's... It's interesting because usually people are more nervous when they talk to other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, the other thing I'm going to say about the speaking is no matter what, don't stop speaking. Don't stop speaking. All That's right. Me, man. That's me. All right. <laughs> 
because if you speak silent periods will cost you a lot of points. Silent periods will cost you a lot of points. Okay? It will cost you a lot of points. Okay. Now, if you make mistakes, don't worry. Don't worry. Um, the, how can I say it? The instructors, sorry, not the instructors, the examiners know that people will make mistakes when they speak. But focus on, focus on speaking more. You know, if you make a mistake, if it's a, if it's a fast mistake, you can correct it. You know, for example, this morning I woke up at 10. Sorry, I meant I woke up at six and then I went to the store. You know, you correct the mistake fast, then do it. But if you can't correct the mistake, don't try. You're going to sound very ridiculous trying to correct your mistake <laughs> on the, in, the, in the middle of a test. Yeah. You're going to sound very ridiculous. So, so don't. Don't try to correct it. Yeah. You know, you're going to sound incompetent. So, you know, the, what matters the most is to just not stop speaking. And w one thing that can help you a lot is speak more slowly than you normally do. More slowly. Mm -hmm. Now, don't speak like an old, like AMLO, you know, don't, don't speak like AMLO, <laughs> but, you know, Hola, Juan Martin. I work also, for also, when you speak, if you speak slowly, it will help you a lot because you will say less words in one minute, and also you will have more time to think as you speak, but if you try to speak fast, you make more mistakes because you're you're not thinking enough and you if you are speaking fast and you stop it's going to sound very bad but if you're speaking slow and stop a little bit it's, it's gonna sound natural you know what i mean like a pulse yeah yeah i mean we we all stop when we speak yeah um but if we speak more slowly that would help us a lot. And plus, remember, the examiners, they don't know if you speak fast or slow in real life. So if you just, if you speak maybe 60 words per minute, maybe try to speak 45 words per minute. You know? Okay. And that will help you a lot. Remember, it's, it's better to speak slowly and clearly than to speak fast and sound ridiculous. All right? Nice. All right. Advice. Yes. Good advice. Um, and well, with the writing, I'm not going to give you any advice because you have good writings already. Maybe check. <laughs> except, except Carolina and except Roman. I don't know what happened with them. <laughs> I, yeah. I say the, the same letter. <laughs> All right. Okay. You, you, sent it to, you sent it to me on my email already? Yes, I said the same letter that you oh. read in another time, but I correct the mistakes. Yes, you sent. Uh, oh, you sent it. I, I'm yes. going to, to to correct it, my my writing teacher. I'm going to send you tonight. No? Okay. Yes, Please. I'm here. Please. Yes, yes, of course. Okay. Um, Roman, I didn't receive yours, man. Okay, I need it. Let, let me check my email. I, I yes. maybe put another word. <laughs> yes, yes. My email is f.gatica1105 at gmail.com. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Uh, we're yes, going to send, send you uh, your email. No, you can send it to me on WhatsApp if you'd like. To. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, guys. And well, that is all I can help you with. All right. All right. Now, the next step is to send a message to Stephanie so you can take the second sample test. Okay. Take pictures of it, study it, do these things. Remember that you don't need to take the test immediately. Maybe you can take one, and you can take it in one week or in two weeks, and that's fine. You know, you, you can talk to Stephanie and she will adjust your, to your schedule. And if you don't feel confident, you can retake this course again. But I don't think it's gonna be necessary. Like, if you do these things, if you take the sample test and you do these things, everybody should get B2, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody. Romo, I think you are also ready, man. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> yes, thank you. Appreciate that. Right. I want to say something about you. Really, you, very fast. I, I remember I told you, you are the man. You are the best teacher. <laughs> yes, best teacher I have in my career because you are so oh patient. Yes, because you are so patient. You are kind, man. And you are the very, uh, I don't know, step by step. <laughs> you, you do your things step by step and show the formulas and show how to improve my English, our, all English about us. Thank you for all. I appreciate. I want to give my friendship. <laughs> oh, I, I want to be your friends in, an, in other time. And thank you so much about all you teach me. Oh man, uh, Romo, th those are beautiful words. I appreciate that so much. And of course, we can be friends, man. I I'm going to save your number on, on WhatsApp. And if you ever have any questions or you want to come to Acapulco, okay. then you know, just send me a message and we can, I can take you around, show you the nice places around here. <laughs> Same to you. If you want to visit Torreón, Gomez, Lerdo in, in all of the country, you are so <laughs> very, very appreciate you give my invite. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I think the same uh, like Romo. Uh, during my studies, uh, I didn't feel uh, comfortable in my English classes. That's what I uh, stopped uh, next levels because sometimes the teachers, you, you, you know how the teachers uh, teach, and it's more like, oh, come on. I I really don't know if yeah, if I am going to understand uh, difficult topics, but you you may make them uh, look easy easier than uh, than they appear, and yeah, some sometimes uh, like yes, as, as Romo said, the the formulas and and the way you you teach. Uh, uh, is more comprehensible than than other teachers I I had, and I also uh, say thank you for th those these classes because uh, for me it helps a lot. Thank you, Oscar. Man, that, that means a lot, man. And I, I am really happy that you guys can understand how I teach. You know, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> That's what I follow you on on Instagram and, and it's a, YouTube for for next uh, topics. Yes. Great, great. Thank you. You have man. a wonderful you have a wonderful techniques, teacher. Really. Ah, oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're um, an amazing teacher. Thank you, Carolina. <laughs> Thank you so uh, much. Teacher, you oh, give he's an amazing person. Thank you, Nidia. Thank you so much. <laughs> you give another courses about uh, for improve uh, as a teacher? Like the TKT? Uh, no, TKT, no. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Like you talking about like just... I, I I take the TKT, but you know my communication in English is is um poor. It's okay. difficult, you know, for me speaking and listening, right? So and I don't know uh, another courses. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do, I train teachers, you know, I have trained like probably 50 teachers and not only just with the TKT, with other aspects, you know, that because some people, some teachers, they want to go from B2 to C1 and it's difficult to do that in Mexico because not many teachers have a C1 level. So yeah, I can help them do that. I can give you great techniques. Um, and look, I'm going to be honest. Everything that I learned, I learned from other teachers. But I add my own Your style. labor, Your style. Yeah, my own style. And so I, I didn't learn from anybody in Acapulco. I didn't learn from anybody in Mexico. I learned from those, those teachers on YouTube. I learn from them. <laughs> yes, yeah, so so I that that is my secret to be honest. I am I am a person that if I have a problem, I go to Google. If I want to learn how to do something, I go to YouTube. You know, I am very technology influenced. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I first became a teacher, I I was like how to be the best teacher on YouTube and on Google. And then uh, how to explain the present simple. And I watched all of the top teachers, how they express the, the, simple, the, the simple present. I took one thing from each teacher, boom, boom, the best things. And I put my own thing because, you know, your students are different yeah. from, from that, that teacher. So I had to think about my students, how, how can I make this good for them? Because they have different needs and they have a different level. <laughs> And they have different interests. So how can I apply that information for my thing to them? And, you know, if you want to become a great teacher, that, that's, that's probably the best tip that I can give you. Copy other teachers. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes uh, there are only uh, okay. few teachers like you can copy. Like Japanese or Chinese when she yeah. do something. <laughs> Yeah, when he do something, they copy and do the best way and <laughs> do the most. Uh, I know. Yeah. And for example, the TKT course, you also teach it? Uh, I have taught it three times, yeah. But uh, can you send the info? Uh, Maybe in some months or other weeks, uh, I'd like to take that course. Well, you would have to do that with English access because I mean I have all I have the material oh, okay. and stuff, but you need to take the actual test with English access. I see the same uh -huh. uh, uh, English access. Yeah, so I need yeah, to yes. ask about the info. And and for the and for the TKT, either I will teach it, or Mario will teach it. And Mario is a good teacher too. So okay. with the TKT, so it'll be really really good. And Carolina, okay. if you have you know if you want to know more information about that, you can just send me a message. All right. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Okay, yes, and I'll be glad to help you. And uh, well, Mr. guys, I guess this is it. <laughs> and uh, it was really nice getting to work with you, getting to know you. And, um, you know, if you have any doubts with anything, you can always send me a message. I have teachers that I have worked with years ago, and they send me a message. Hey, man, how do you explain inversions? <laughs> how do you explain this? And I'm like, oh, it's like this, like this. So if you have any doubt, you know, it's... You know, send me a message because I would like to help you because I know that if I help you, you will help your students. And that's the most important thing, you know? Yes, I yes. appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you so okay. much. Well, 
It was nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice um, to pleasure meet you. to know you. It's a pleasure you have my to phone know number. <laughs> All right. Stay and there, teacher. Whenever you receive your results for the test, send them to me. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to okay. I'm going to post them on my Instagram. <laughs> oh my <God>. Nice. <laughs> yes. Oh. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. See ya. See ya. See ya.